Hi, I'm Erin Edwards. I'm here with Javier Guerrero, CEO and President of Coastal Roots Farm at Coastal Roots Farm in Encinitas, California. I want to specifically talk about your climate smart farming and why this farm is different than a traditional farm. With soil, you're always thinking about like, what are you putting in and what are you taking out, right? And so in terms of what we're putting in or not putting in, is the harmful fertilizers and pesticides. We generate all of our own soil. Um, we receive cuttings from arborists and other sources. We've gotten you know, waste leafy greens, we've gotten horse manure. And so that allows us to actually compost significant amounts of material at one time, while at the same time diverting all that material from the landfill we're putting in the nutrients from bringing the chickens through the fields. And what they're doing is they're eating the bugs and the insects, so that's pest management. They're going to the bathroom, so that's fertility and putting those inputs into the soil and the nitrogen back in the soil. We're pulling in nitrogen via the chickens as well as through our cover crop, pulling that into the soil and that's keeping that healthy fertility in the soil, keeping that microbial world um, rich and diverse. Uh, and then we'll come along after the cover crop and we'll lay down an occultation tarp, which is gonna block out the light. It's gonna allow that organic matter to kind of break down into the soil. The produce will be nutrient dense and we're planting different crops at different times that are gonna pull up different nutrients from the soil. And so that's really important too, that in that rotation. Letting the land rest is also super important. So in that resting downtime, if you will, that's when we're also planting our cover crop because we're putting in and we're not taking out. Tell us about your forest ecosystem, what that entails and how that helps the crop. So we have an agroforestry system. We also call it our food forest on the property. It's about eight and a half acres. We're planting pioneer trees. In our case, there's a lot of elderberry amongst other fruit bearing trees. And that creates a berm. And then as you go on the uphill side of that, it dips in, that's a swale. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna mitigate um, erosion. Between those rows of trees, we are planting our crops. We call that area our silvo pasture, and we're coming with our direct seeding planting. So you could have different fruit bearing things that you could grow above, you could be growing uh, berries below, or, or different herbs and that sort of thing. And then in between, you're growing your food and your produce. How does the soil here sequester carbon? Carbon sequestration or pulling you know, CO2 from the atmosphere. I mean, that's what plants do naturally. And so the root systems, the material in there, it's called suberin, as that kind of like expands and, and grows depending on the type of plant or the depth of the root systems, um, it's able to hold that in the soil. So when you break up the soil and you till the soil, you can release that carbon. And so there's, um, there's a lot of studies being done in terms of like how different types of plants and using different types of cover crops or even having different types of trees and whatnot can further help with our challenges of climate change. I also like the Jewish values that are incorporated into mm -hmm. Coastal Roots Farm. You know, Judaism is so closely tied to agriculture. And so in ancient times, people would line the corners and the edges of their fields so the sick, the weary, the elderly, the traveler would have dignified access to food and they would be able to glean food. On a corner and edge of our property, we have our pay what you can farm stand. So people can come here on a Thursday from 12 to three or a Sunday from 10 to three, and they can choose how much they would like to or need to discount with no questions asked, up to $30 per visit. Um, and that could include eggs on Sundays. Another is Adam Badama meaning both uh, human and earth. And that value just in terms of the connection between, or I should say how we are so connected to the earth and to the land and how dependent we are. So when we think about challenges of uh, what we're doing to the environment, what happens to the earth happens to us and we are very interconnected. I Did I hear it's 80,000 pounds mm -hmm. of food produced a year? Throughout the year, 
we're currently right now annually growing around 80,000 pounds of produce, feeding around 40, 45,000 people. There's the pay what you can farm stand, uh, which about two thirds of the people use the pay what you can. Then what people purchase supports the farm. All the produce that goes out into the community, which is around 75% of that 80,000, is 100% donated to food insecure uh, families through our many community partnerships. We're growing around 60 different crops throughout the year. And at any given time, we're growing around 30 different crops. So when you come to the farm stand or the food that's going out through our food distributions, it's a nice variety of produce because uh, we also try to have uh, culturally relevant foods. And you're educating people about Climate Smart farming. You know, we refer to ourselves as a Jewish community farm, as an educational farm. We are currently welcoming over 10,000 youth from throughout the county. Our programs are pre-K through 12th grade. The focus is environmental education. You know, obviously how the plant grows and understanding food and food systems. We also talk about food justice. Um, we get into, you know, depending on the age group, we get into like a pretty wide variety of topics because um, it is so important for uh, youth today to understand um, their impacts on the environment and health and wellness and nutrition, regardless of what they do in their life and in their career. You know, again, going back to what I was saying before about the connection between people and planet, it's so strong and it's really important that um, everybody's participating in the care. We have other programs that happen throughout, so not just the youth programs, but we see another 5,000 to 10,000 people throughout the year mm -hmm. through other community events, workshops, programs, agricultural festivals, and so on. Uh, so it's a very much a community-centered, education-centered uh, organization. Jewish traditional farm, but open to everyone, right? Yeah, absolutely. Food and farming and land and the environment, these are things that we all share, mm -hmm. regardless of our respective differences and backgrounds. We're really excited that we bring people here. And again, the, this farm is guided by those Jewish values in a way that is also very welcoming, because one of the volumes is welcoming and making it a place for, for everyone to feel part of what we've created and what we offer and to feel connected and connected to the land. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you so much again. And if people have more information or want to learn more, they can visit our website at www.coastalrootsfarm.org and follow our social media channels as well.